Hi YouTube, Jacob Graham here for Unix Soldier. Today I'm going to talk to you about RAID. Not the stuff under your mom's sink, and don't eat it. No, <laughs> no, but RAID is the idea that you take, for instance, a RAID 0. You take two drives, and you stripe the data. The way you remember RAID 0 from 1, because I used to always get it mixed up, is there's zero redundancy in RAID 0. Okay? So, RAID 1 is the idea that you're mirroring. So, let's go back to RAID 0. RAID 0, you, tell, you basically have one volume out of the two disks, so that to get to the data, you have to work half as hard, because both drives contain it. Does that make sense? Okay. So, anyway, it's striping. You basically get a faster performance out of RAID 0, but it's less reliable, because if one drive dies, all your data is gone. Okay, but with RAID 0, you have a lot faster of a system because they work together. RAID 1 is completely different. RAID 1, in, in for RAID um, 0 and, and 1, you both need a minimum of two hard disk drives, okay, or solid state drives or whatever you're using. Um, <coughs> RAID is more of a theory, or um, I guess you could say a I won't say it. I was going to say a protocol because the protocol is a set of rules. But anyway, it's basically a, it's a, it's a theory more than anything. So you can have four floppy disks if you wanted. If you coded it, you know your own RAID software and did all that kind of stuff yourself, you totally could do that. Um, but RAID one's the idea that you take two drives and you mirror it. So every, you tell the controller basically whether it's on your board or on an actual like LSI or or whatever controller or Promise controller or something like that. You tell the controller that everything I write to disk 1, I want to write to disk 2. And that's RAID 1. That's mirroring. So RAID th uh, 2, 3, 4 are totally unimportant, and I'm not going to get into those. So going right along to RAID 5, Microsoft recommends this as their best practice. And you need a minimum of 3 dri dri drives for RAID 5, and a maximum of 32. So the idea behind RAID 5 is that if you have, if you have a whole... Um, if you have a whole bunch of these drives, you can make a very fast volume out of it all because they all work, again, as one. But at the same time, RAID 5 uses a certain amount of the data, usually one drive, for storing everything as a backup. So in RAID 5, you can have up to one hard drive fail and all your data is fine. But if you get up higher in an array and you're getting up to 20 or 30 drives, the issue with that is you're actually less like it's actually less uh, reliable because now all of a sudden you have more of a chance of two drives failing at the same time. This is where RAID 6 comes in. RAID 6 you need a minimum of four, okay, and, I, and I'm not too sure on the maximum. I can look that up right now. But basically, um, RAID 6 is really nice because RAID 6 is really nice because you can have up to two hard drives fail and you will still retain all of your data. That's huge. You know, and it does the same thing as RAID 5, but Microsoft doesn't really recommend it. Or they don't not recommend it, but they don't. Um, they don't have any restriction on it. I'm just looking up here. Uh, yeah, you know what's interesting too is because uh, um, some of my friends are into Linux and stuff like that, and, and Unix. Uh, well, I'm into Linux, more so into the Unix side of things. Um, in programming, they they actually are able to do software RAID at the kernel level, which is really cool. Um, so you can have in a parity set up to 18 disks in RAID 6. So not as many, actually. I was actually surprised. I thought you could have more. But um, RAID 6 is a bit more fault tolerant because, you, like I said, you can have two drives fail. And then next, the next big one you got to know is RAID 10. So again, I think it's a minimum of four drives. RAID 10 is the idea that it's one plus zero. So again, it's the idea that you're striping and mirroring. But the way it's doing it, it's a little bit different than some of the ways I previously mentioned. Instead of like with RAID 5, instead of having one or maybe two drives to do that, you're actually doing it like a hierarchy. So basically, I kind of forget, I think because I think you can have it, I don't think there is a set way to do it, because I think it's reversible. But basically you have a stripe of drives, and then you mirror those, or vice versa. You mirror your drives, 
and then you have a stripe set. So, let me just plug this guy in before I die on you guys. I'll be right back. I'm back, I'm back, plugging this in. Please don't short out my UPS. Okay. Oh, fuck. Excuse me. Alright, we're good. Video's still rolling at five minutes. Nice. Okay, so, um, so that's raid 10. Um, basically, I think it's really interesting too because everybody knows that you take, or everyone thinks anyway, that you take actually a performance hit when you use raid 1. And that's what I thought too until I worked at a company recently and I kind of dove into why it wasn't slower. And it actually turns out that, especially if you're running raid 1 on a controller, it actually um, apparently buffs some of that into cache, and you don't actually notice the slower performance. It's actually um, something like 4% faster to run RAID 1 um, as opposed to not running RAID at all. So you don't actually see a performance hit. If you wanted to run your server in RAID 1 with two disks, that's actually a really good idea because when you have to do a backup, it's super simple because you have two disks with the same image. And I actually almost prefer it after seeing that because if I ever have a server fault, I can just pull out the system drive really quick and pop in the other one and then mirror that later, which is really easy. Um, so, I mean, and software rate isn't that bad either. I mean, they don't recommend it, but um, that's just what I've seen. And some of my friends that are really into Unix, they're really big on getting the actual kernel to run RAID or um, modifying the kernel to do RAID features which is part of Linux, apparently. Um, so I don't really get into the programming side. So RAID's kind of cool, right? It gives you this idea that you're going to have a bit more security or in speed. I mean, a lot of people want to throw their drive, you know, eight, eight SSDs in RAID 0 and see what kind of performance they get. And that's a really cool idea. But again, you now have eight drives that any one of them could fail, right? So that's what RAID is anyway, guys. I hope I've helped you here. And... Uh, um, my subscribe button's going to be up there. Yeah, I got it right this time. And uh, please leave a comment down there. Okay? Um, if you guys uh, have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to ask me. Um, so, um, yeah, that's it. Later, guys.